Approximately 38.4% of men and women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. The number of cancer deaths per year is 163.5 per 100,000 men and women. Recently, this has been personal to me because my dad was one of those people. This led me to my epic quest of googling how cancer works. And whilst it may not be an epic quest, it's still a very important one. Whilst I was googling about cancer treatment, I stumbled upon something called angiogenesis and how tumors depend on it. Before I talk about angiogenesis, let me talk about the usual treatment regimen for cancer, which includes radiotherapy and chemotherapy. If we consider cancer as an enemy invading a village, then chemotherapy and radiotherapy would be a head-on attack. In order to kill the enemy, you drop a bomb on this village. Sure, it'll probably get rid of most of the enemy, but you still risk killing many civilians. Chemotherapy works exactly like this. It stops the growth of cancer cells, but it also attacks other fast-growing good cells. This results in huge collateral damage. Because of this, side effects include both fatigue, hair loss, easy bruising, infections, nausea, and constipation. Batteries not included. Another war strategy with less collateral damage that could be applied to treating cancer is to cut off the enemy supply lines and starve them to death. This war tactic was used by Russia in World War II against Nazi Germany, which led to the Germans retreating. Maybe it wasn't a coincidence that this tactic was suggested to treat cancer by a military surgeon. That military surgeon in question was Judah Folkman, who was considered the father of angiogenesis. Angio meaning vessel and genesis meaning birth in Greek. For example, when you get a paper cut, angiogenesis occurs. Blood vessels are created and then directed towards the cut, where blood will be supplied so as to form a scab. It is a vital function required for growth and development, as well as the healing of scars. Angiogenesis has two factors, inducers which provide the blood vessel growth and inhibitors that inhibits the growth of blood vessels. In normal tissues, the inducer gets counterbalanced by the inhibitor. Without blood supply, most of these tumors never become dangerous, or as Judah Folkman put it, cancer without disease. For cancer to grow, there must be more inducers than inhibitors. Tumors initiate angiogenesis by releasing growth factors into the surrounding tissue. Anti-angiogenic drugs block angiogenesis, leading to starvation of the tumor, similar to our war tactic of blocking the supply line, with minimal collateral damage. This sounds promising, but it still has its limitations. Did you know many plant-based diets are anti-angiogenic and inhibit different growth factors, like lycopene present in tomatoes and suppresses an inducer called PDGF, or how my take in mushrooms inhi inhibits another inducer called VEGF. So a range of anti-angiogenic foods can be a brilliant strategy to inhibit angiogenesis, but very few clinical trials have been done due to lack of funding. The control of blood vessel growth through dietary angiogenesis helps to redefine cancer treatment. Angiogenesis is a critical target for cancer prevention, so make sure you do eat your vegetables.